Hello, and welcome to the CCI After School Club. So if you joined us next week, you will have noticed the music and you'll also know a little bit about how the After School Club is running. And welcome back if you did join our first session of the programme last week. So this is our second session. We're very happy to bring it to you. If there are some newbies that didn't join us last week, welcome. Um, please make yourselves comfortable at home. We'll tell you a little bit about the After School Club and get stuck into the session at about five past. So we've got a very exciting visiting artist for us today. So there's just a few things that I need to go through before we go ahead. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone for being here and supporting us whilst we deliver this programme online. It was initially going to be a physical after school club that ran in Camberwell in our community space. And then, of course, a pandemic happened. So the CCI team, we've been working really hard to put this together and we're really pleased to deliver it to you online. So thank you for joining us. So we, if you're watching on Eventbrite, um, please just watch through YouTube just so that you can access the comments. So the main way to communicate to myself, the CCI team and our, um, and our guest artist today is through the comments. If you have any questions throughout, if you have any feedback for us, please post it in the comments and we'll be posting links in there and keeping you updated through the comment section as well. Also, please subscribe. So we've got a full program. There's an after school club that runs on a Thursday at four o'clock weekly. And there's also a wider online public program that the CCI are delivering. So we've got really cool technologists and creatives from all over and loads of information about the courses that we run. So please keep in touch with us by subscribing. The last thing is just a little bit of safeguarding. So everyone's welcome in this space. Of course, a usual after school club, you would only expect young people to be there. But as it's online, we thought we'd open the doors. But please do respect that there are minors in the room and we do need to safeguard them. So definitely no foul language. Of course, you wouldn't anyway, but I've just got to say so. And if you do say anything inappropriate, we will be removing you. Apart from that, please just be mindful and kind to each other and don't be scared to ask questions. So we're here to support you and make you feel as safe and supported as possible. So please do use the comments, but please use them sensibly. Please also don't share any personal data in the comments, of course. It is public and the session is being recorded. So anything that you do put in the comments will be um, available to see afterwards. Also, recording the session means that you can use this link to rewatch the session. So feel free to pause and rewind throughout if you do want to go back over anything. But I would suggest staying with us live so that you can interact in the session and you can always rewatch it later. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome anyone that's just joined us to the session. Um, I've just been going through some really important safeguarding things. So please do rewind if you have um, if you have just joined us and I would like to welcome our guest artist currently on a course at the CCI which I'm sure she'll tell you all about. This is the wonderful Val and Val I will let you introduce yourself and take it from here. Thank you for joining us. Can you hear me? Fantastic. <laughs> Sorry about that delay, everybody. So we can hear Val now. So Val, please do introduce yourself. Um, hi. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm Val. I am a current second year student at Campbell studying 3D design with creative computing uh, on the diploma course. So essentially a sandwich course, you could say as well. Um, so how it worked was I was in my second year entering my third, so dissertation. And then, you know, the CCI appeared, this completely new creative computing institute. And I just thought, do you know what? I'm going to apply. Um, I was scared to enter my third year, my dissertation year, because I had no idea what I wanted to do just yet. 
and I've kind of been interested in coding. I mean, I have no prior experience with it, but I just thought, you know, I'm just gonna apply and see how it goes. And now I am almost completing my year of diploma at CCI, which has been amazing. Um, I'll be talking about that more as uh, the presentation goes on. Um, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. I'm a film enthusiast. Uh, I'm currently in the process of making my own experimental films. Um, and with the opportunity of learning code as well, I've just combined those two skills uh, to just show my artwork. And I'm just so glad that I sort of learned how to apply that CCI and learned how to do code to just sort of combine the two and I don't know, have these visions and just have it out there. I'm also a writer. Um, I write my own poetry. I do a lot of essay writing as well. And when I'll speak later on in the presentation, I was also um, published in the writing piece as well. I'm also a makeup artist and a sustainable designer, first and foremost. Um, I'll just show you guys a couple of my work, my practice. Um, as I mentioned, I've had no prior experience with coding at all. I knew about it briefly, just like from the media, you know, like hacking into the mainframe and all that. Um, I had no idea that creative coding was a thing that you could make art out of code. Uh, so that's new to me. And joining CCI was just a bit intimidating at first. Like I won't lie, all this technical talk and maths and I thought I had avoided maths for the rest of my life joining into an art school but it came back to me um but yeah it was very intimidating at first but then once you start learning something new and something that you love on top of that it's just amazing and so rewarding um I think it's works well within my practice anyway because I tend to work digitally anyway um as a 3D designer I tend to do a lot of model making um, for instance, this particular piece, I like to paint on top, do Photoshop, just to further expand the art piece. And also the fact that I like to limit my manufacturing process um, just as a sustainable approach. I don't wanna be wasting a lot of material. Um, so yeah, I tend to stick digitally, digital artwork a lot of the time. Uh, oh. Again, I do collaging as well. Um, I use collaging as a meditative tool. Uh, when I struggle to write or communicate my ideas, I tend to just bring out a stack of my magazines, my little scrap papers, and just get to it and just have my thought process conveyed into images. And these are some collages that I had from a previous project where I was looking, uh, we were looking at Stave Hill Ecological Park. So I was just looking at nature and sort of especially I grew up in London, um, we're sort of like, it's a concrete jungle. And I feel like in a lot of places, everything is going up in terms of skyscrapers and man-made materials that we often forget sort of the natural ground that we live in and that, you know, mother nature provides us. So these collages sort of convey those ideas in ways I couldn't really express in written words at the time. But again, I like to, play around with multiple mediums and materials. Uh, it just keeps me sane, to be honest. It just keeps me sane. I also, as a 3D designer, I do have to do a lot of uh, digital work. So I have experience in SketchUp, CAD, and Fusion 360. Um, it's great to explore these digital outlets because there's no closing time with workshops, you know, it's too full so you can't go in or it closes after five, especially during these times with COVID and everything. Um, we have no workshop facilities. Uh, so working digitally is amazing because you can work all hours, all days and no one can say anything. So, yeah. Alongside that, I had the amazing opportunity to make my own clay. Um, again, going back to Stave Hill Ecological Park in Rother High, um, in the Docklands, I got to dig up my own London city clay. And it was just amazing, amazing and so rewarding to sort of 
be just get so hands on with a material that I've I will often purchase it in uni. So I go to Camberwell and we have a workshop there, and you can buy bags of clay for four, six, eight pounds. Um, but this time I got to dig it up for myself. Uh, had to separate it from the dirt. Had to sieve it, water it, sieve it, water it, and it was a process that took me probably four or five weeks, but it was so rewarding because at the end of it, I've got this lump of clay that has been sitting underground for God knows how long. And yeah, it's just so amazing. And sort of these pictures show how unpredictable the material is, but it was just, it was so rewarding to work with it and just to know, just become so close, so much closer with the material and sort of, my making my my products um, with that again i'm a ceramicist i use the wheel quite frequently and hand build as well um, a lot of experimental techniques done with glazing um, yeah it's just a rewarding experience i love being messy with my hands um, again being at the workshop at camberwell there's this huge sense of community uh, where you can just walk into the workshop and you can just be like, hey, that looks amazing. What are you working on? You just exchange ideas with different people. And with everything that's going on, it's, it makes you miss how much um, how much time you spend at uni and the incredible people involved with it. Um, but yeah, when it comes to sort of glazing at Camberwell, um, glazing is free. So there's a little glazing studio at the back and you can actually make your own glaze. I actually had a classmate of mine who, I don't know how she did it. She she enjoyed chemistry quite a bit. And she had a little notebook of all like her little percentages and like just a full on chemist there at the studio. But it's just amazing being in this community where it's just incredible minds are just lurking at everywhere. And with CCI, it's the same thing. Like. It's a creative school. Yeah, you've got these technologists. And yeah, it's just a balance of two different worlds. And, you know, it's come together and created such an amazing presence in Camberwell. It's so different. Um, these are one of the experimental films that I made. Um, a current project regarding motion history and fame, frame difference. And... I sort of just, I'm a film enthusiast. I watched, well, not really as much as I like to because I'm sort of doing a lot of work more often now. But I just watch a lot of films, music videos. And, you know, sometimes I just, I feel like not working on a particular brief or whatever. I just want to distract myself. So I just, I, whatever I'm interested in, I'll just combine it all. I make a digital collage. Um, this is just the output of one of them. Um, looking towards frame difference and yeah it's just an amazing way to sort of convey my emotions and just my work process process into you know what I'm interested in and how I can pursue that in code this is my own coded piece so the great thing about coding is Everything's open source. It's all about sharing and exchanging ideas and developing other people's work for it, for your own piece, for your own work. And this is just one of my experimental pieces. And what's amazing about this piece of code is it came out of a lot of experimenting. I didn't have an entire, I didn't have a full understanding of how what the code meant. So I'd spend a lot of time of just reading it line by line, taking it in. Oh, I don't understand this term. Let me just Google that. And once you start reading up on what each individual word means or what each equation adds up to, you can sort of figure out and see what kind of things you can manipulate and change. And this is one of the effects that I managed to make, a sort of glitch effect where you change the outputs and you change the colored output, so RGB, red, green, and blue, and you increase its value. So for instance, you get more of a red trail um, by increasing the value of red. And again, no experience with code at all. This is my first time 
doing it ever and just sh sort of shifting my brain into like this new entire world and just having to read everything a couple of times, a couple of YouTube videos later and you realize, oh, do you know what? I kind of do get it. That that does make sense as to why that would create that sort of peace. And everyone at CCI are so helpful. Um, it's such a large team and it does end up feeling like a family because it's quite open plan anyway, the studios. Um, so if you ever have questions, you can just go up to someone and be like, hey, do you happen to know how this works? Or do you know, do you have any idea why this does that? Um, yeah, it's, it's just so rewarding. Um, more of my work. Again, um, this was quite fun. Again, with coding, it kind of lets you have the opportunity to sort of have current events and live events and make it more entertaining or or more relevant to like young people, I guess you would say, or just anyone in general. So that particular piece I made when the general votes, the general election, and I was just a bit annoyed with the whole thing. I was like, I don't want to be reading any more text saying why you should vote this and that and that. How can I make this more fun? How can I make it kind of funny, I guess you would say, more artsy? And I found a piece of code, bit of this, bit of that, and ended up with this. And my friends loved it. They reposted it. And it had, I wouldn't say more of an impact, but like just more fun with it. More, you, you have an opportunity to sort of look at things in a different perspective. This is also. Uh, audio reactive piece from my previous project. Can't emphasize how important hashtags are for people to see your work. But this as well, I was in this particular project, I was struggling so hard because um, I was like, how oh, how do you sort of have audio react to the screen and just crisis over crisis. And then I ended up coding this myself and I'm so proud of it. And if you do go on my Instagram and you know scroll down, you can just see sort of my process throughout and the different techniques I managed to make. But it's just so rewarding to you know ask help with within your peers and your tutors as well. They're so helpful, and just ask them. I don't know how to do this. Would you help me? And they're more than happy to do it. And yeah, it's just a beautiful project. Um, that is you know, much larger. This was one of the experimental pieces. And there is a lot, of the final piece is actually uploaded on my Instagram if you want to take a look. Um, again, more of just my work. This is also audio reactive. And yeah, it's just experiments as well. I didn't, once I figured out how you could map audio to react towards the color, um, it was just a single, it was just a single piece. It didn't even move actually. Um, so I, you always have this thing where you always, you make something, I guess, simple to yourself and then you can always come back and rework and you realize, oh, do you know what? I just figured out this new code. Maybe I can implement that into my previous work and how would that look? And you end up with just these beautiful creations that are your own, that are just experimental 100% along the way. Uh, this is a mouse interactive piece that I actually love. And yeah, it's just con it's a continuously drawing a circle and a square based on the mouse positions. And yeah, you just, you just have to go on P5JS, I'll be showing the website, and you just type in whatever you're looking for. You know, I don't want a mouse, no cursor, it will show up. And um, there's tutorials on this on YouTube and everything. But it's just amazing because, you know, you, you're playing around with this as a life drawing with a red circle and a blue square. And, you know, you pause it and there you go. There's your art piece, you know. And you can have that as like an album art or just like a series of collages. It's just beautiful when it comes to um, code and the interactivity of it all. Because once you pause it, it's an art, art piece in itself, you know. It's, something completely different every time and it's 100% within your control. You decide what you want to do with it. 
So my experience, um, I'm going to start talking about how I got here from the very beginning, I guess, um, only because I kind of wish someone had told me that it's okay to sort of pursue a creative career. Um, I'm Afro-Latina, my parents came from Colombia, and me and my sister were born here, so a lot of the time growing up, we were told, you know, pursue something academically, something sustainable, something that will, something safe, essentially. And I always let my parents know that, that I want to be an artist, I want to do this and that only, and, you know, I'm very hard to argue with sometimes, so I just stuck with it. But it, I did reach a stage in, during my GCSEs and A-levels where I realised, huh, maybe doing an art career is risky and like, you know, maybe I can just do it as a hobby and do something else, do play it safe. And, you know, when you're young, it's just, it's so hard because you don't know what you want to do a lot of the times. You, you kind of want someone to tell you what to do for yourself, but sometimes you just have to stand your ground. And yeah, during my A-levels, I did English Lit, Psychology, Art and Spanish. And, you know, once you had to apply for university, I was so sure I was going to go study psychology. Um, everyone told me just do psychology. It's safe. Yeah, psychology would be a great career. Um, we had a career counsellor as well. And I told her, I'm really interested in art, but I don't know if I should do it. And she told me, why not do psychology? And I was like, do you know what? Maybe I'll do psychology. Um, but my art teacher, thank God, she saw my potential. And she was like, if you love art so much, why don't you do foundation? And I was just like, what's a foundation? I've never heard of that before. And, you know, she was like, is this course you do, a year course you do before you enter university? And it's just building your portfolio, getting it ready to actually enter the real deal, the full commitment of it all. And um, she, I signed up to this. It wasn't called Insights when I applied, but it was an autumn winter school, which would be this one right here, the Progress UIL Insights. And it was every Saturday, um, 10 till 4, so it was Saturday school. Um, but I loved every minute of it I was so excited to go every week I would come back and tell my teacher it was amazing we did this and that and this and I met these great people and it was an amazing experience just entering entering UAR at the beginning and just having to just realizing there's a whole other world out there that you know you don't that it's not like that it's a lot more creative that works with sort of the way my own brain works where you know, don't get me wrong, I love writing and I, I love studying psychology and all these academic stuff, but I'm an artist at the end of the day and, you know, I, I just had to do it. So this was one of my A-level pieces. Unfortunately, this isn't the finished work and I cannot emphasize this enough, guys. Um, all you young ones who are interested in doing art, document it. Oh my goodness. I don't have any pictures of this work and it was so beautiful. I'm so proud of this work. Um, I had it in the chapel of my secondary school. It was two pieces and I just, I don't have any images of it. I just didn't take any pictures. I, I don't know why. I, I just, I just can't think of the reason why I didn't document it at all. So yeah, if that's one tip I give you guys, document every single piece of work, even if you don't like it, even if you think it's crap, just keep it, just take a picture of it. You know, we all have great phones now that, you know, you've got a camera in the back of your pocket at this point. Uh, there's no reason not to take pictures of it and just keep it in a file in a USB somewhere. But yeah, it was during this piece where I realized I actually love making, I love building with my hands and just sort of creating a new world for everyone to sort of remove themselves with. And yeah, it was at this part where I was just like, huh, maybe I want to be a designer. Maybe because I come from a fine art background. I just thought I love painting. Don't get me wrong, but I want to build things. I want to use my hands a lot more often. And with that, these are some of the examples of my some winter school preparation for the foundation portfolio. And they take you in this process where I think they had us between 
the two Camberwell campuses. So you have the foundation building and you have the Peckham Road University building. So we were moving back and forth. The main studios was in the foundation building and we would use the equipment, so like the printmaking equipment at the main building. And if you do decide to join the summer course, winter course, um, I highly recommend you take it to your advantage and sort of like, you know, finesse the building and not finesse the building, but finesse the equipment and like the resources they give you to sort of make it work alongside whatever project you're working with at, at your school. Um, it was quite helpful to like, for instance, in this first one, I was, this is in relation to the previous slide I was showing about flora, I was looking at florals and, you know, we had a printmaking workshop. So I was like, oh my God, let me fill up my sketchbook for school. And I did some floral printmaking and yeah, it was just very diverse. It was, again, a different way of thinking how you can use art and, I feel like in in school and the education process is very technical, like to pass, you must do this and this and this. And when you, like when I started entering UAL and just art school in general, they make you, they make, they rewire your brain. You think in a different way, like, you know, oh, you're interested in that. Okay, do it then. Or you like that color, throw it in there. And it was that type of mentality that just sort of like shook me awake. Like it just opened something in me, just like this, I had like this creative vomit, like, oh, cool, I can use this to draw. And like, for instance, this last image here, um, one of the tasks was to, they had different materials, different objects on the table and they were like, draw it. Okay, not with a pen or a pencil, draw it with tape. And it's just like, you have something so different and alternative and it's just amazing. Um, yeah, it's just that kind of UAR mentality. I'm not sure about other art schools, but it's just, it's very different. And it's just so nice to sort of leave school and then just enter this sort of new world of like, do whatever you like and you don't have to explain yourself in any sort of way. Um, Again, with the portfolios, um, so many life drawings. Oh my God, life drawings. Although I do really recommend doing life drawings just as out of practice. And there's so much peace in doing life drawings as well. It's so weird. Like I hadn't really thought about life drawing since foundation, but um, with the whole thing with COVID and like not being able to do anything, I've just had sort of this period of like, looking back and just thinking about what I miss. And I genuinely miss doing life drawings. There's so much peace in just sort of sketching out something live right in front of you. And um, I picked these two particular drawings. I have so many in my portfolio, but these particular ones are so distinctive because the first one, again, life drawing, um, but not without pencil or drawing tool. Our drawing tool was paper no scissors, nothing. You just had to free cut and stick. And that was it. And it was just so amazing, um, the sort of what I produced as well. And this other sketch as well, bear in mind, my portfolio is A1. So these are A1 pieces of sheet. And this particular drawing on the right hand side is A1 in length. And I actually love this sketch so much that once I have all my hand in sorted, I might have to go back and just like re-sketch it and repaint it because it's so stunning. And it's all just one line, three line drawing. And it's just like these different techniques and approaches they give you. And you just sort of like figure out these new, new talents, new skills that you didn't know you ha you'd had. And yeah, you are just sort of encourage you to to reach your full potential and realize you know you've got the talent you just have to you just need that little nudge a little push um i've now entered foundation after that i got accepted um yeah i just mentioned that i actually didn't this was the only like 
university I applied for, I didn't apply to like, I didn't have any safety net to fall back out, back down, which was a bit irresponsible on my part. Um, but yeah, I was just so sure. I was like, wow, I just fell in love doing that um, autumn, winter, Saturday school thing that I was just like, yep, I'm coming to Yoyo and that's final. And I got accepted into foundation and foundation is split between specialist and diagnostic mode. So as soon as you enter, you get to choose, you know, whether you want to specialize in something, you know, graphic, 3D, fine art, or you can go into diagnostic mode, which is where you get to experience a little bit of everything all in that period. And then towards the end, you get to select which one you kind of fell in love with um, the most. Also, I want to put it out there. If you guys have any questions or if you guys want me to slow down, if you have anything particular that you're interested in, just drop a comment in the chat. I'm more than happy to help. Um, I've got the guys here just messaging me. So if any, if you have anything to, you want to mention or you want me to cover anything in particular, just drop it in the chat. I am more than happy to answer questions. I am at your free will. Um, but yeah, again, foundation. Um, UAL, again, with their very sort of different alternative approach, their quirky approach. Um, but yeah, for instance, in this first image here, we had to make a, what was it? I think like a photography device. And it's very like, it's very niche tasks, but it's like a photography device. And I made mine a rectangle with some CDs that reflected on the opposite side. And then, yeah, you got that amazing image. Again, I might have to go back and uh, redo these projects. It was so funny how, when I was doing this present, making this presentation and bringing up my old work, I was just like, that's amazing. That, I really like that. I might actually have to go back and look into that. Um, so yeah, a lot of old, again, a lot of your old inspiration always comes back to you. And, you know, I'm in a more, after being in university for quite some time now, I have this more, technical skills and approaches as to how I can make in comparison to way back then. And it's just exciting because like, this is my own work, these are my babies and now I get to see them flourish a bit more. Uh, different materials again. This was quite fun. We had to build our own stage set. So that's when I had entered sort of my 3D specialist modes towards the end. Um, I made a bracelet out of shot glasses, shot, yeah, sm small plastic shot glasses, and um, you just had to melt them. And I caused a bit of trouble at the workshop, actually, because the fumes were so bad. But um, again, the workshops are amazing, the technicians are amazing. Um, whatever vision you have, just give it to them, and they, they are more than happy to help. Um, again, another 3D, um, work we had to produce where you bring in an object, a piece of furniture, dismantle it and make something new. And this is my something new. So this was the chair I brought in and I ended up dismantling it and making this table, this very quirky table that kind of looks like a chair but doesn't at the same time. Uh, but yeah, so much fun. I didn't have any experience with um, like heavy machinery and like tools. You know, the only experience I had was the with the floral project. That was just paper, glue gun, and scissors. That's as technical as I went back then. So, you know, I had projects like these, and I was just like, oh, no, what am I going to do? But this is UAL. This is Camberwell. Um, it's a community. Ev everyone will help you. Whatever you need, there's always someone there that is just willing to give you a helping hand. And that's what I love about it. Uh, this was a group project, quite a bit of group projects. I feel like it's sort of like a social encouragement as well, because you don't really know anyone. Um, I entered foundation with just one other classmate of mine. And that was it amongst, I don't know how many people are in foundation. Um, <coughs> I'd say 600, I think in that one foundation building, but it was just me and one other friend. And 
everyone's a stranger, you know, and you just have to sort of make friends. And I feel like these group projects really encourage that. And yeah, it's just, it's just great seeing sort of all these international people, all these people from different places and different experiences and different backgrounds. And you all work together to create just one amazing piece. And um, this is one of ours. And my piece is, is this big structure here with the acetone paper, um, which I find stunning as well, particularly with the shadows. And again, I will definitely come back to this um, with my newfound coding skills. Um, I wanna, I quite like the colors and maybe not do acetone paper, but maybe like LED light strips and use an Arduino. Uh, but yeah, come documenting your work guys, document your works. Because when you get older and you develop more skills and you know how to do more things in a larger scale, you're going to want to come back to sort of like, these are my rough sketches and now I can build them sort of thing. Uh, my industry experience. So this is where it gets juicy and exciting. A uh, bit more adulty now, sort of grown up a bit. So when did I start working? Um, I was in my second year now. So I was in my second year at this point and um, a friend of mine told us, a couple of my other friends as well, there's this guy, he's looking for apprentices to help him in his furniture company at Make a Varsity at Somerset House. Um, would you guys like to do it? And I was like, yes, you know, this is perfect. I do 3D design. Um, they really encourage furniture and product design anyway. So this would be perfect for me. Let me just get my foot in the door. Um, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll really like this and, you know, I'll just network and sort of get my ticket in there. And yeah, I entered Somerset House, Make a Varsity, and this is that, is it basement? This is just downstairs. I, I'm not sure public if the public have access to it, but um, they have a lot of frequent events there. And it's just an amazing, space oh my god i fell in love with make adversity when i did my work experience there and it was just so rewarding and in terms of what i did i worked in this furniture company and these are images of sort of the final pieces and so much blood sweat and tears went into this but i did a lot of sanding manufacturing i did product consultancy so you know what color works well should we use oil what oil um, investigating materials for packaging as well because it is a sustainable brand so you know I know you can see a bit of plastic there but it was always reused um, our boss always encouraged that like don't throw it away we're gonna reuse it and it was, yeah it's just sort of amazing to just see this company just one mat a solo company and just yeah how it works behind the scenes um, yeah, it was really professional, so much fun. Um, the workshops are amazing there as well. Um, the only thing I would say is at the time when I was working there, um, it was just a bit hard because like I was the only brown girl there and it was just like in this sea of like white men, just me liking and it's just like, again, the importance of representation and sort of growing up as an Afro-Latina myself, like me and my sister, it was just like, oh, I'll be the only black Latinas in the world sort of thing. But like, you know, nowadays, social media, you have access to all these amazing other people and you get to see all types of bodies and people. But yeah, you just sort of, it's so important to just see it in the workplace and especially in Make Aversity now, like once I've go on their webpage and I contact different people now, you just see like the diversity is coming up now and there's so much more powerful women you see in workshops and in product design and just designing. And yeah, it's just, I realized during that work experience, as rewarding as it was, A, I'm not really interested in furniture that much. B, I wanna be, among my own people, I want to be around POC. I want to be around incredible, powerful women. I I am a wonderful, powerful, incredible woman, and you know, I just yeah, I just want to rep. I want to be able to represent that that you know we can do it too. That we're here, we're present, 
And yeah, I just want to be involved in in that those type of worlds a bit more. Um, oh man, so women in leadership and wrecking tour. This was a program with Creative Shift. Shout out to Creative Shift. Um, it was a nine week program at LCC. So I'd go every Wednesday and they'd provide you with meals and everything. And it was just so rewarding. Um, I met so many incredible women from all the different campuses, all these different courses, courses I never knew existed. And yeah, it was just so rewarding being in this space with all these powerful POC women just doing our thing. And again, entering university, especially since I was, I've, I've, this is recent as well. So I was already in CCI. I had begun to feel like this feeling of like, I can do anything, I can apply to that, I can do this, I can do that. And that's what I started doing. So I applied to this on a whim, I got accepted. Um, yes, I was a bit afraid because I didn't know anyone, but I was like, you know what, Like, you just have to do it. Especially in a creative job, you have to network and you have to talk to people. You don't know. Um, so this is like great learning skills. And the great thing about this brief was I got to write. I got to write and I love doing my essays. I love doing my evaluations because I love writing. And this is actually like a publication brief that I got to do with Rackinto, a professional publishing house that do special reports with the Sunday Times. And I got to write about my passions. I got to write about sustainability and I got to write about plant practice. And yeah, it was just so much fun. And unfortunately due to COVID and everything, um, we didn't get to present present it. We were supposed to have a live brief with the whole team, um, which was they're still planning to do once everything settles. But yeah, I, I just can't recommend this program if they continue doing it. And, you know, if any of my UAL folks are doing it, I think this was for second years. But yeah, just do it. Any emails you get from UAL about programs or workshops, just go for it because you're going to meet incredible people and you get to develop your own skills further and just getting your foot in the door any way you can. Resources now. So in terms of coding, I've just sort of compiled like all my little helpful bits and bobs. And this is the king of code, Daniel Schiffman. Um, oh man, let me show you guys a video actually of Daniel Schiffman, he has got this enthusiasm and he can explain everything to you as well on top of it, which is so helpful. But he's got this enthusiasm that, you, like, especially if you're gonna be learning along these times as well, but he's got this enthusiasm that you can just learn from home and you will enjoy it 100%. And these are just like beginners videos and he just goes everything step by step. He explains everything. Incredible channel, cannot recommend it enough. Daniel Schiffman. Um, Code Academy as well as another good resource. Um, so I'm kind of using it at the minute. I haven't used it in a while, but I was learning how to do HTML and it's free. Yeah, it's free sessions and you can just, let's see what we can learn. So you can, they've got a range of subjects, web development, data science, computer science, coding, code foundations. And yeah, it's free. You get to learn um, coding and as well, they explain everything really well to you. Um, they have this, so on this side you learn these, there's questions and like you have live interactions you can do here along the side and live viewing as well, which is great. Really love Code Academy. We also have Future Learn. This is Future Learn, which I am actually in the process of doing a course with CCI with Charlotte and Alex, and two tutors from CCI, and it's designing a feminist chatbot. I am on week four and I have 11 days to complete this course, so I have to get to it. But I cannot recommend FutureLearn 
Um, any hire it is great. It's free as well. The only thing you would have to pay for is if you want sort of certification that um, you completed the course. But you have all these ama amazing resources, you know, build a future with robots. Let's see what this is. You know, three weeks, three hours a day. It's just incredible. It's crazy how much things there are to offer in terms of code because it's all open source, it's all free. Everyone wants to teach you and especially like when, and well, we already are in this sort of digital innovation, but like coding is very important. Like I like with my cousins, they're 11 and 13, they teach them computer science. I never had that growing up. Again, I don't know anything about code, but it's incredible and especially creative code because it just taps into that nice little brain of yours of like creativity and like code and it's just mash it into all one big lovely cake. Glimmer, which is glitch. Um, yeah, so if we go on Glimmer here, they'll have these different resources and like features. But if you go here on starter kits, you can see how to do a bunch of stuff. So you can make web apps, make a website, um, web VR. Let's do, let's make a website for instance. You got YouTube again, great resource. The different languages. Um, but yeah, let me show you an example of how Glitch works because I love Glitch. It is, um, yeah. So let's just, this is Glitch. And then you would remix a project, remix to edit essentially to make it your own. And if this worked, yes. Um, yeah, these are the different codes. Obviously, this may mean something to you, some others, some it may mean nothing at all, um, but that's where you sort of learn. And yeah, it's just because the format is so simple and it's kind of beautiful on its own, you just feel less intimidated by everything. Because in terms of like when I applied and I realized, oops, I have to do this one year in code, what am I gonna do? I sort of had this vision of like, you know, like Mr. Robot and like, you know, the whole technical of it. And it's just so intimidating when in reality it has these beautiful interfaces and it's actually not that scary at all. Um, another resource, Behance. These are sort of like where I can find my inspiration from. So this is what it would look like once, you, if you don't have an account, for instance, um, your first web page will look like this and you will select the topics you're interested in. And another reminder, hashtags are great in any sort of social media, hashtags are your best friend. So this was, this is my page essentially, and this is what it looked like. And you just look at different projects. Uh, let's see interaction. And these are just different people's portfolios and you just sort of, have a look about what they've created and just draw inspiration. I'm not sure what this is about, but uh, yeah, it's just great. Amazing when you just have, just you're feeling kind of low or you just want a bit of burst of color or whatever, definitely recommend Behance. Uh, Medium, um, Medium is great for reading. Again, hashtags, if you want, sort of like contextual studies or just like context as to like your project or just more information. Um, Medium's a great page. I think you can only read a certain amount of essays, um, write text in a month. But for instance, we have these great resources where a lot of it isn't, you know, essays or text, but is actually like links and extensions and towards you just need to know sort of what to google and again just attach it like coding techniques medium um this these links will be posted on the chat and uh, this is a good one 
I'm definitely going to save this for myself. What else do we have? Colossal. Great for art, art inspo. Um, I can spend ages just scrolling and scrolling. But if you want more inspiration, this is quite cool. <clears throat> Colossal is a good one. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this, but this is really cool. I saw this on Instagram. But um, <coughs> it's a good example of um, creative coding at its works. And you just really do really cool things like that. Uh, social media, it can be your best friend. It can be your worst enemy. Depends on how you do it yourself. Uh, I've had Tumblr since the dawn of time. That was my first ever sort of social media. And I tend to have um, different accounts. I've had this, I think, further in 2015. But um, yeah, just separate your accounts. You can, you can have your main account where you just post your things you like, and then you have your art account. I have a writing account as well. I have a landscape account. I have a fashion account. And you just reblog things there and just have it as your little mood board. And, this is mine, you know, whatever. To be fair, I haven't actually looked at this in a very long time. But um, it's just great. Like, whenever you just need inspo, you just, like, pop on there. Um, Instagram as well. This is, for instance, my art account on the side. I have three separate accounts. And, yep, hashtags are your best friends. That's how you get more views. That's how you get more followers, not that it's very important, but you get to see the different people you have, you know, in the web. Um, but yeah, this is just more of like <coughs> my, um, sorry, like my creative content just thrown into there, um, especially recently in recent times, especially when I went to my university and I met with my manager, he was the first thing he asked was, what is your Instagram? And I was like, oh, it's like that already. Like Instagram and it's like, no, your work Instagram. And I'm just like, oh, I didn't have one at the time. So I was like, so that's going to be a thing now. It is a thing. People will hire you based on your account and sort of the content you pay, you post. Um, you know, Kim Kardashian has admitted she will hire someone, her fitness trainers based on their Instagram. FK Twix has hired someone, her makeup artist based off Instagram just make an art Instagram. Honestly, that is the way, we, that's the world we're living in, apparently. Um, another resource, Pinterest, of course, I'm sure we all know Pinterest. Um, but I wanted to show this as well, Code with Clossy. I didn't have this growing up. I think this is recent as well. But yeah, two weeks summer program for young women between 13 and 18 years old. And it sounds amazing and definitely encourage that um yeah because there's not again representation the importance of it there's not a lot of women in code in the code industry or computer science either so you know we've got to start somewhere and you know i'm entering that industry and i hope i inspire you guys to enter that industry as well and just yeah do it all what else do we have pinterest of course and notion any questions? So if you have any questions, now's the time to send them your our way. Um, I do hope you guys feel a bit more confident about, you know, coding and sort of your creative career and where do you want to, where, where do you plan on going or if you want to go into coding and if CCI is the right place for you. But yeah, CCI, no regrets there a bit of fear and hesitation entering it, but I have entered it and will be leaving it in the utmost confidence, knowing that there's an entire amazing community on the top, on the fifth floor of Camberwell. And it's amazing, I love it. And I definitely encourage everyone, especially second year UAL students, um, if you don't wanna graduate anytime soon, come to the diploma, it's amazing. and. It will definitely change your life having that extra skill alongside your diploma, your BA.
But yeah. Um, we did get one question, Val, as well, which I'll ask quickly because we've got Sweet. four minutes left of the stream. Yeah. Also, thank you so much. That was really insightful. Um, people have said it was really insightful um, and have been following throughout. So thank you. Sweet. So we've well, got a question. If anyone's got one, please pop it in the comments straight away so we can ask it in these last few minutes that we've got left. Um, we had a question from Alex. Do you think it's okay to enroll in the CCI sandwich diplo diploma without being interested in coding? That's a good question, 100%, um, because I believe that you will find an interest in there somewhere. Um, you may not find it interesting, but uh, trust me, like it's, it's great. You can do physical computing, Arduinos, or there's just so, there's just, it's so open. Um, a lot of my work is sort of like fine art based and media based, but you can do physical computing, you can do machine learning. I'm sure that, Alex, that there is something in there that you'll definitely enjoy. Thank you, Val. I, um, I definitely agree. And I think, um, yeah, tech is so broad and it's only getting broader, yeah, isn't it? Um, it is. Yeah, no, thank you so much. I don't think we've got um, any more questions coming in. Of course, we popped the CCI email address in the comments. So if you do have any questions, feel free to email us if they are regarding the courses. And, um, you know, if you are on Instagram, you can clearly follow Val and follow her work on there. Um, so yeah, thank you so much to Val for providing us with such an insight into your experience and you know what you're presently pres presently doing. Yeah. That was um, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, it's been great. So everybody, thank you for joining us. We're going to close the session in a minute. Next week we've got another visiting artist for you who is Joseph Losper, and he's going to be giving us a session on how to 3D model your own gallery space. So Joseph is a fine artist, just like myself and Val, that is also struggling with the lack of gallery spaces due to the pandemic. So Joseph's going to be showing you how you can bring the gallery to your desktop. So please join us next week for session three. I hope that you've all enjoyed session two. It was really nice to hear Val's experience, a current current um, designer and fine artist that's interested in tech. So anyone younger in the room that's interested in art and tech, please do pursue it. We can't stress more that there is a career out there for you and hopefully hearing Val's um, successful journey through creativity and technology has inspired you a little bit to keep in touch with us. Um, so yes, Please join us next week at the same time. And thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful evening and see you next week.